This is the Tabernacle Podcast with me, John Vermilia, and sitting in for the wayward Britain bishop, is Adam Sharp. What's up, JV? I'm supposed to tell you. I'm, wait, come on, man. We got to do oh, that again. Right. I'm supposed to say, start, what's start up, over. Adam? No, no. Okay, what's up? What's up? Uh... I see I had nothing ready. Usually he's always like, what's up, John? And then I just come up with something. Say it, try it again. Say it again. What's up, Adam? What's up, Adam? Not much. Not much. <laughs> that was clean. <laughs> see how <laughs> simple that was? Yeah. Yeah. That was super, super. Okay, I'll tell you something that's up. Yeah. This is this has been the weird thing. And you already know about this. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you were the one of the first to know. Is Tab Family on episode 105... Uh, one of the last episodes that Britain Bishop was actually here for before, what is he on the Martin Rizzi vacation? He's gotta be. He's just chilling. Plan? Isn't he? Like yeah. Rizzi's always on vacation. Just yes. not, he doesn't have any more vacation than anyone else. God, I don't want to start rumors with the weirdos, but Rizzi just, spa- he, he'll take he two days. He utilizes it perfectly. I don't know if he does, man. You don't think so? No, because he takes two days here and one day here and th- you never have but vacation. But when he does the, it's like the a day two off. days here, he'll make sure it's like. With another day off or something, so he gets the most out of it. Yeah, that's that's called manipulation. But whatever, <laughs> maybe. Bishop <laughs> Bishop is always gone. All right, yeah. so I I feel like my back hurts. If you saw me at the annual meeting, I was all my back hurts from carrying Bishop on this podcast. <laughs> that's what it is. If you saw me, I look real uncomfortable. But I digress. On episode one hundred and five, um, Bishop and I did a review of the Basics Conference twenty twenty three. And uh, we're still trying to figure this out. I remember at one point, okay, the basics conference, if, if you didn't catch that, you just need to go back and listen to that episode. But there were three awesome speakers and our favorite one was Herschel York. So we had a guy named Colin Smith who was good. Mm-hmm. We had Alistair Begg who was great yeah. and he always is uh, and he was the host. But one of his guests was this guy, Herschel York. Uh, the the lead pastor of Buck Run Peppers Church. Mm-hmm. I, it's Buck Run, right? Yeah. And he just, there was a talk that ripped all our faces off. Yeah. And I remember one of us said something like, Herschel York, if, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, um, you know, that, that, that was the talk of the thing and you'll have to listen to episode 105 to know why. All that to say, I got a handwritten note from Herschel York in the mail this week. That's incredible. That's exactly. Cool. And, and, and this is how it started. It said, Pastor John, as a matter of fact, I do listen to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden I was like, oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. We need to up. So, well, you saw the note, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who does that? Amazing people. Can you describe it? Well. Like, do, do you remember what you saw? Well, what sticks out to me the most is how he closed his envelope. He had a wax seal, bro. There was a wax seal. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. He had like embossed Herschel <laughs> York stationery. <laughs> That's incredible. And it was handwritten. He has very nice handwriting, like calligraphy. And yeah. then there was a wax seal. Yeah. I thought someone had been kidnapped. That's amazing. When I got this handwritten note. And at first I but thought there it were was- business cards to-, to you know, There was business. Legit. He was legit. It, yeah. it, it was legit. He had some very kind words in there. So I don't know if Herschel York is still listening. We hope so. To the podcast. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> no, we really want him to. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I think that's accurate. Can I live it's, up to that? I, it, that's why I'm not sure if we can live up to that, <laughs> right. that if he's listened to some right. barbarians from the great white north. But if if Pastor Herschel York of Buck Run Baptist is still catching an episode or two, we just want to say the invitation is open. A- mm. To take any weekend, uh, you can have our pulpit any weekend you want. I mean, is yeah. that fair to say? Yes. Like we're going into Titus this summer. You want to come to Northern Michigan? You can have any of the weekends. Uh, this fall, we're going to start First Kings. Are Otherwise you down if he takes the First Kings? One Kings. One Kings. Yes. Yes. We're going to go into One Kings. Yeah. Thanks, John Woodhouse. <laughs> yeah. um, be on the podcast. I don't know if he golfs. Yeah. I know he likes Southern fried food. We have this thing called man camp that we look for speakers Ooh, for. Oh, that's the one. Everyone's been yeah. saying we would love him at our man camp. Yeah. So that invitation is only uh, your majesty. Uh, I don't know. He's probably not your majesty. <laughs> He's a <laughs> Southern gentleman. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyways. Uh, pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I got to respond and it can't be an email. No. And it can't be a text message. And you're going to have to like melt down some, some of AV's. 
birthday candles. I'm going to have to get some <laughs> wax. Make, make some wax. Where do you yeah. even buy that stuff? I'm going to have to get like know. a signet ring. <laughs> I don't know, bro. With the Tabernacle logo. The tab one, It'll yeah. be epic. Yeah. All right, we're goofing around long enough. Uh, right. I'm super excited because we do have an awesome guest. He's a, he's a guest. Well, it's his first time. So I don't know if it's accurate to call him a guest because he's on the team. He's joined the staff. Amen, uh, you may have yeah. met him at the annual meeting. Um, uh, Pastor Isaac Riddle, who uh, we've just hired to be our campus pastor yeah. at the new Cadillac campus. Woo-hoo. So Isaac, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks, brother. It is a joy to be here with you guys. Well, I don't know how long it's going to be a joy because we we'll like see. to point out the, <laughs> let's just start with, tell us about that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I don't know you what it is. You missed the black First t-shirt. All, yeah. Memo. The memo was just yeah. thrown out the window Your hat's today. close, but it's still uh, not right. You know, no, I like that hat, I, to be honest. Listen, I, I bought one of these, like, I don't know, Is it just like super comfortable? Ago, and it was just cozy yeah. and it was festive. And I'm like, that's the thing for the summer. Yeah. We're just doing like the, it. the summer. T- it's all prep for Titus. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking of you. Well like, played. Mm. It's all mm. ministry. Yeah. So. Yeah, Titus, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you may not get that reference now, but uh, Titus uh, is our summer expository Did series. I just give something no, away? No, oh, no, okay. no, 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 cool. no, 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 not at all. <laughs> just ruin the surprise. Um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> when this podcast drops, we'll probably be in our first episode yeah, of, or yeah, our first, first week. episode, our first or second weekend of yeah. Titus. Yeah. And we chose the island theme because Titus right. was written to a church on Crete mm-hmm. or a pastor of a church on Crete. And that's an island in the med. So well played, man. Thanks, that bro. was well played. Listen, and it's... as a Michigan guy, I assume you want to make the most of summertime. That's what it is. Because there's only like a couple weeks of it. Listen, it snows mm. nine months out of the year. Uh, so we got to get festive while we can. Yeah. That's, Fest- that's uh, <laughs> summer festive. I've heard Christmas festive, but yeah, oh, yeah. we're getting sunshine festive. That's right. what it is. Um, <laughs> well, we met, Isaac, we met you back, I want to say January. I think um, you're right. Yep. Probably on paper before that, but we had posted this job thing and uh, you were gracious enough to first come. Well, the hi- let's, let's, let's be honest. The hiring process at the tab is weird. First, it's just come and hang out. Yep. And then we want to just see, you know, can he hang? <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 then it's like, did I okay, hang? Is yes, that, okay, yes, cool. yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did. So, yes, we're you here. Did. Yeah. Yes, you did. Uh, and then we did the second uh, thing, which was more of a formal interview, and then mm-hmm. that was a, a couple days process. And that time, you came up with your wife and son. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. we're just excited to have you as part of the team. Um, and uh, what we wanted to do on this episode is let's just get to know Isaac. I love so. It. If you're a listener and you're thinking about Cadillac or you're already from Cadillac or Lake City, uh, Tustin, Houghton Lake, um, all part, Manton, all parts east of uh, the Tabernacle Buckley campus, yeah. um, and you're thinking about Cadillac, we just wanted you to have an episode and for the rest of our Tab family to get to know mm-hmm. someone that's going to be a part of our leadership. Mm-hmm. And so uh, thanks for being with us. Let's go all the way back to the beginning yeah. Where are you from, man? Where are you born? Are you like an island man or are you I a Michigan man? I am not man? an yeah. island man. I'm a Michigan man. So I grew up in New Era, Michigan, which is Oceana County. Um, that would be south of here. Yeah. About an hour and a half. Okay. Um, Just in the there. middle of the state? Is that kind Dude, of the, I've never heard of New Era. It's actually Lakeshore. Oh, so do okay. you know like Silver Lake? Yeah. Right in the ballpark. Okay. You're 15 gotcha. minutes away from there. So. Gotcha. And it's, it's called New Era. New Era. Like like the baseball cap. Like the baseball right? cap. Isn't yeah. there a New Era yeah. baseball cap? Yeah. Yeah. I was really Written pumped to walk into this church for the first time in Buckley because in New Era, it's woods and cornfields. Mm-hmm. So it was like, all right, I can work you felt this. at home. Yeah. <laughs> <You> felt <laughs> at home. I know what yeah. this feels like. Uh, yeah. This wow. is real good. So, yeah. Yeah, that's where I grew up. So were you born into a Christian family? I was, sort of. Let's go there. Uh, there's a story, man. Can I just unwind yeah. all of it? The story. So, we want to hear about your journey. Let me tell you <laughs> my journey. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Journey's a good word, man. So uh, I was born into, I think, what I would probably call a broken home. We got to like watch the time here because I could go all day too. Um, my mom is just a wonderful, one of the most compassionate, kind women that I've ever met. And as far as I can remember, has been a Christian um, and has always been faithful in preaching the gospel to me. I mean, literally, since I can remember, 
But at the same time, I think if I had to put it to words, I came from, oh, a family history of abuse, anger, and addiction. Mm. And as like a kid, you throw those words out there and you're like, I don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. But as a kid, I remember what it felt like. Um, and we can unpack this more mm -hmm. in, in the future here in the next couple of minutes. But um, I remember my mom in, in the midst of just family trauma, my mom was so gracious to just continuously preach the gospel to me. Um, and eventually it stuck. Mm -hmm. But just because of some past stuff and some things in my family, God was kind of a distant reality for me. And one that for the longest time, up until I was about a teenager, it was like, and I don't know. I don't mm. know if this is something that I'm really interested in. I don't know if this is something that I have a desire for based on my own experiences. Um, but eventually, the Lord got a hold of my heart um, and used just a lot of past stuff for good. And that's kind of what catapulted me into ministry. So I say, born into a broken home that was Christian and became Christian. Does that make Ooh, sense? Yeah. yeah. Born into a broken home. That was Christian, but you became Christian. Yeah, that's gotcha. real. I think that's yeah. probably the best way to say yeah. that. Do you have brothers, sisters? I like do. That? I have two sisters, two brothers. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. we're a big old family. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So as a kid, like, what kind of things were you into? So all the sports. I love sports. I love music. And we had this, when I was in high school, we had a quad. And that was like my favorite thing to do in my downtime, which is just ride around. My parents were on like 15 acres. And so that was the thing, like just nice. going out and chilling in the woods and being on the quad. I think that was probably one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. So when was the first time, like, so, so you, you grew up going to church. I did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, when did it become really real for Isaac? Oh, man. So, I mean, more than just, you know, so you're going to church and I'm assuming, but you're also getting mixed messages at home oh, because real. it wasn't 100 percent consistent. Yeah. And I, I think because I've heard your story before that mm -hmm. there was at some point where mom and dad split. There was. Right. Yep. So when I was a when I was a young kid, there was a divorce. And that was, I think, part of what caused this seemingly broken relationship between me and the Lord, because mm. I had experienced some things in relationship or in my relationship with my dad that were not great. Mm -hmm. Looking back on them, I'm like, that was a source of trauma, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so growing up, I had heard so much from my mom, uh, mm -hmm. how much God loves you mm -hmm. and how much he wants to give you his grace and how much he wants to be your heavenly father. And I thought to myself, I don't really know how I feel about that because I've got some stuff mm -hmm. that says that's not a good idea. Um, because of all this, I, middle school, high school, and like, whatever this God thing is, I want to do the opposite. Oh, So like, yeah. I was a punk, right? Mm -hmm. And like, we get to high school and I'm doing like typical punk things, right? Like sneaking out in the middle of the night and going doorbell ditching with your friends. Mm -hmm. um, just hanging out, doing things you're not supposed to. And mm -hmm. I remember there was this pivotal moment. There's a story here. We're, so like I said, my, my mom, my parents were on 15 acres. And we got to ride around in the quad, right? Mm -hmm. And so the house kind of butts up to what is the New Era Canning Company, right? And that's just trails and woods and all these manufacturing plants. And my mom always said, hey, uh, you can do whatever you want. You can ride wherever as long as it's on our property, right? Like you have to stay here. Kind of felt like Mufasa and Simba. Mm -hmm. Like you see that mm -hmm. elephant graveyard. Yeah. yeah. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't do that. Um that was the rule. And I'm in this season of being a punk, right? And I remember mm -hmm. on this one day in particular, I'm riding the quad and I'm like, I know I'm not supposed to go here, but I just feel the itch, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm riding with my buddy, Tyler, actually, and we get to the property line and then something terrible happens. We cross it mm -hmm. and we just go to town. And I'm probably like giving myself away. I hope nobody from New Era just like digs this up. No, 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 no. Like, this is the guy who did that. Well, Herschel York's um, listening. <laughs> that's so. right, Herschel. <laughs> I apologize, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we tear into this uh, this canning company's property, and guys, it's a mess, right? Like we're just doing terrible things. Donuts all over, mm -hmm. just burning out holes into these trails and we're throwing water and mud and rocks all over these manufacturing plants. And as we're having fun, my buddy and I look up. 
And when the dust kind of settles, we see this car, like, beelining for us. You ever, like, had that feeling in your heart, like, I've been caught, mm-hmm. and it just drops? Like, in that moment, it dropped. And so we head for the house, right? And we run in, and we fly by my mom, and she's like, what are you boys doing? And we don't even talk to her. We go down the stairs, and we go to my bedroom, and we shut the door. Maybe we're going to get away with this. It might be okay. And then, like, three or four minutes pass, and we hear kind of a knock at the door. Mm. Maybe it's just a friend. Yeah. Somebody, no, you're busting. <laughs> somebody <laughs> coming to talk to my mom or I'm something. I'm getting anxious right now. Dude, I have I a know. guilty conscience dude. about things in high school. Dude, and yeah. I'm sitting there, like, sweating, right? Yeah. And my mom, after some conversation, she walks downstairs, and she looks at me, and she's like, Isaac, you're going to have to deal with this one on your own. Like, you're going to have this conversation. So I walk up. My friend walks up with me, and... My mom ditches. Like, she goes to a different room and lets us handle this. And in the middle of my living room is the Michigan State Police. And I'm nice. like, how did they find us? Oh, yeah. what, what are they doing in New Era? In yeah, the right. woods, right? <laughs> but they found us. And I'll be honest with you guys. They were really gracious and really kind. And I was let off way too easy. Like, it was a stern yeah. talking to and then heading out. Um, I'll tell you this, though. They did kind of keep their eyes on us after that because, like, for the next five years, if any there was, if ever there was any, like, trouble in the town or doorbell ditching or whatever, mm-hmm. even if it wasn't me, they were knocking on our door first. Just to uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you were on their radar. So mm-hmm. I, I shared that story to point out that was, like, a pinnacle point of a season where I was just, like, doing my own thing mm-hmm. and living how I wanted to live. And after that encounter, something snapped. Like, something changed. And I started to feel the weight maybe of some of my decisions and other people started to speak into them. So shortly after this whole thing at my church, there was a worship leader and um, I don't know, she's probably my mom's age Mm -hmm. and she's just a nurturer. And she had approached me one day, like after that whole quieting experience. And she said, Isaac, Hey, I know you've got a thing for guitar. Um, You're going to come join praise team, which is really funny by the way. Cause again, Rocky relationship with the Lord at that point. Mm-hmm. Point, and he, she's like, "Hey, we're just gonna force you to worship." We need him. a guitarist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And so at that point, you knew how to play the guitar. I did. At so that music point. was like one of the passions. So it, even though you're into quads and sports, yeah, you're music also was a there music too. Side. Yep. Actually, it was a really big part. So I don't want to miss that. But she invited me to come play on praise team, and that was the next few months of my life. Thursday nights, I would go for a couple hours with her, and I would just talk about life. And some of the things that I've been through. And then we go to praise team practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, so my lead pastor at the time, guy by the name of Mark Loman, he's still in West Michigan, pastor, rock star. He approaches me and he said, Isaac, you and I are going to spend some time together. And for the next year, we did one-on-one time every single week where it was like, go out to lunch Mm -hmm. or just sit in his office and talk about the Bible or whatever. And it was through that experience where I realized, oh, I've got some things that I need to work on. So Mm. I'm rabbit trailing a little bit No, not at all. But in one of our conversations with this pastor, we're talking one day about just the season of life I'm in and we're reading Ephesians 2, right? And you look in Ephesians 2 and it talks about all of the former parts of our life. As for you, you were dead. Mm -hmm. You did have transgressions. You were formerly walking in sin, Mm. but, and you keep reading and it says, God, because of his love, but God, amen, brother, has made you alive with Christ. And then you keep reading and it says, you know, for by grace, you've been saved. Now, when a Christian typically reads that verse, they get pumped, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's the gospel is all over Ephesians 2. I remember sitting there with my pastor we're unpacking trauma. We're unpacking me being an idiot and, and just mm-hmm. acting out at the house. And I read this verse, and I got to be honest with you guys, was not excited. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't see the hope of the gospel because I was caught up on one part. You look at the beginning of the verse, and it's, you were. Yeah. Formerly, you did do these things, and it was like light bulb moment. Um that's not past tense for me. Like, I'm still I'm doing still, it. I'm still <laughs> doing it, man. Yeah. I'm living like yeah. this yeah. right now. Um, so it was in that conversation. It was through reading that passage where it was like it all started to click. Mm. And I realized I am not taking the Lord seriously. I recognize what his love is. I recognize the need that I have for it. And it's time to surrender. 
wow. uh, to that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just a pivotal point yeah. in that story. It was just, it literally was one day where it just clicked and I thought to myself, oh, there's a better way. Mm. Uh, and so from that came some life change. And it's not like a flick no. of the switch. Mm-hmm. Um, there were years where I continued to just battle with some of the things that were tied to my past and some of the ways that I coped with that. I had to figure out how to wrestle with God's grace and truly surrender. But I remember looking back on that and going, okay, that's when things changed. Mm. That's when I understood the Lord and wanted to serve him. So, so when, you, when you were brought into the, to the worship team and we started meeting with, uh, with Mark, and maybe you already alluded to this a little bit, but were you pretty receptive to that? Like when he's like, hey, I want to meet with you. Were you open to that? Or yeah. were you just kind of like doing it out of obligation? Honestly, a little both. Like I was receptive, but I also just kind of felt like, oh, this is something that I'm probably supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, dude, we're going to spend some time with you. I saw that there was an interest there and I wanted to honor that. But at the same time, no idea what I was getting into. Right. I thought, you know, we were just going to hang out and eat some food and jam on some guitar. But no, I was being discipled and yeah. didn't even know it yet. <laughs> that was, no. That's what was going what was on that, there. What was that praise team lady's name? Her oh. name was Lori. Lori. So Lori yep. and Mark, Mark, it sounds like God was conspiring. Oh, totally. <laughs> like the hound of heaven was on you. Oh, yeah. And here's some people took an interest. And, you know, there might have been other motives. Like Absolutely. they might have seen something and it's like, oh, this guy's got skills or, you know, we need to get a guitarist. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, you know. They weren't asking you to lead it. They were just asking you to be in the band, mm-hmm. but just being around it. And then this guy, but it sounds like this guy, Pastor Mark, I mean, that's- He's a rock what star. A, what a gift that was. Yeah. And, you know? Y- you know, it was intentional. At first it was like, okay, I, I get to just play on the praise team. I get to just talk to this pastor dude and he just wants to hang out. And then we started unpacking some things mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I see what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, He's pressing in. Well, at that time, you don't have a dad, right? No. Um, and so here's a male figure in your life. Yeah. And, and you know, guys, it's crazy, too, because that's... I mean, you have it. I'm not, no disrespect to your biological dad. Yeah. You know, for all the things, you still have a dad, but he's not present. Is yeah. What I'm so yeah. Th- here's what happens. There's some stuff there. My dad had some troubles, right? Mm. He, he did. He had some troubles, and it made its way into the household, and he went away for a little bit. And it was like, that's what started all of this weird misconceptions about God, this desire for me to act out. And even still, as I look back, I'm like, the Lord was so in all of that. Because fast forward a couple years, my parents get a divorce and my mom is remarried to what is probably the most gracious dude I've ever Uh, met. Uh, And it was like... I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I don't know how I feel about the Lord just because you know, this whole heavenly father thing, I've got weird earthly yeah. father things, but for somebody to step into the picture and say, here's, here's biblical love, that changed the game for me. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you're saying that the stepdad, this is a Christian guy. Is a Christian guy. Yeah. Yep. A gracious one, and, like a godly guy. And I cannot say enough good things. I mean, gracious, godly, to this day, he's probably my biggest role model hmm. but i'm sitting here in the midst of all of this stuff and you're I'm triangulated like, at this point <laughs> man i don't love <laughs> this and i don't even yeah. know what the heavenly father's all about and yeah. then god says let me show you yeah through this guy and i'm like thanks lord how I, how how old were you when your mom remarried i was i want to say seven or eight years old gotcha um so yeah i gotcha. was young yeah mm-hmm. wow that's cool so, um, yeah, so you're a teenager at, yeah. when all this is, like, you're getting serious. When this is, yeah, yeah, this is getting real. What what made you decide first uh, to go to Kuiper College? Yeah. And, um, and or the ministry? Mm-hmm. Like, how did that break down? So. Or that journey? John, bro, it's really funny because at that time, if, if somebody would have looked at me in the midst of just what I was dealing with in my own walk and said, hey, you're going to be a pastor, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you talking about? A yeah. pastor, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing, man. I walked through just different elements of trauma in my life. And, dude, I reacted every possible way. And I got to the end of it. And once I, I mean, I had wrestled with the Lord and really surrendered to his grace. I found myself thinking about my own story, right? And this is like the tail end of high school. I'm like, somewhere out there, there's a dude. There's a person that's walked through a lot of what I've walked through. You know, there's brokenness in their family, there's some struggles, uh, and they're looking for hope. And maybe they haven't found it yet. 
I have. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jesus. And I'd love to have a conversation with that person about Jesus. And so that was kind of the thing that was like, God used people in my story and in my hurts. And I thought, man, if I could be half of that Mm -hmm. to somebody else, that'd be a win. And so from there came Kuiper College and then Calvin Sem. And now I don't think I could do anything but be a pastor uh, because it's what I know. Calvin Sem is seminary, Adam. I didn't know if you knew that. Thank you. I need, appreciate that. Yeah, I know you come from the military. You, learn, you should know right. all those weird... <laughs> all the like, abbreviations. All yeah, that stuff. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Kuiper and then Calvin Seminary. That's right. And during this time, like your focus is I'm going to be in ministry. Absolutely. You knew it. You felt the call, the whole deal. And it's, yeah. I knew it. There was a confidence. There were still some tensions because like I said, even post Jesus, mm-hmm. there were things in my life that it was like, I got to figure out how to deal with these things. You mm-hmm. know, anger, I realized much like other people in my family before me, anger was always an available coping mechanism. Mm. And I'm like, I struggled with that for a really long time. So I'm praying, God, take that away, take that away, take that away. And he did. Um, and there were there were other things that were happening that was like, I, I need to work through these and the Lord needs to show me how. But in the midst of that, there was still this, you're going to seminary mm. and you're going to be a pastor. Um, so it was there. Yeah, I don't think I I ever lost sight of that. Um, I think I probably s- sat back and scratched my head a couple of times, like, "What are you doing? Mm. Uh, you're you're serving in the church for the rest of your life." Young Isaac would have been like, "You are a psychopath." Uh, right. but... <laughs> yeah, you you didn't want any part of it. Yeah. Um, oh, I but... was the same way. I were mean, you? Oh yeah, I'm, I was a pastor's kid, and I was like, "I'm not going to do this." Yeah. I mean, this is this is yeah. what I grew up around. I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. And it it wasn't until age 33 that I finally took a job in a local church, but it was yeah. part-time and it was only going to be for two <laughs> yes, years. Right. But this isn't about me. Uh-huh. But yeah. I, I had a similar thing. It's like, what? We're working what are we church. Doing? What are you yeah. talking about? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, no, so I get that. But um, when when did you actually start working within the church? Because I, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, even at Kuiper, or even when you were in college, you started working in a local church. Yep, that's yeah. true. So my freshman year of college, I started at this church called Ravana Baptist Church. We're actually pre-tab. I, I spent mm-hmm. the last 10 years. I started there freshman year of college, and it was like a worship intern position. Nice. And that just kind of gradually grew as I was figuring out myself and figuring out my calling uh, so worship intern thing happened and I said, God, this is good. We can, we can work with this. And then that became full time. And I said, God, this is good right here. We're good with this. Um, fast forward a couple years. And then I took an associate, uh, pastor position there also working with like young adults mm-hmm. and young marrieds. And I said, God, this, this is good. <laughs> Are you not hearing me right now? <laughs> this is good. Right. Um, and then from there, uh, that that role kind of transformed into a teaching pastor role. And again, I said, Lord, how many conversations have we had? But yeah, <laughs> since college, uh, I had been serving in some capacity in the church, in ministry. That's cool. Gotcha. So at some point, um, and this is this is this is where the podcast turns. You ready? Yeah. At some point in this journey, from you know broken home kid to uh, you know, on the ministry track, he's been to Calvin. Uh, he's at Ravana Baptist Church. Ain't Buck Run, but <laughs> it's close. Still. It's yeah. close. Yeah. 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 <laughs> at some point, you meet this girl named Megan. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yep. Megan. Megan. She'll Pre- call us out too. I'm yeah. Just probably check my text. Right yeah. Now. We had the whole <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Megan. Yeah. The, yeah. You met Megan. Where'd you meet Megan at? Okay. So. I met Megan at Kuiper College, and it's it's this cool thing. So I got to go back down memory lane a little bit. Go here. for it. This I was is at Kuiper, yeah. um, and at this point in time, Megan was not there. And I was there for a couple semesters and just walking through some things. Like I had some doubts. Um, if this maybe if not about my calling, but even the school and the culture and people, I'm like, is Kuiper a Christian? Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a Christian college, right? They're yeah. a Christian. Refor- okay, well. They are reformed Christian college. Sorry, Michigan. Yep. I should know yeah, that. I'm right. not. It's I've okay. It's been good. here tw- almost twenty years, but I'm still not native to all the. I, <laughs> I only know good, Northwest bro. Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. that is yeah. just fine. So I'm there, and I decide in this season. Okay, I'm going to take like a semester off, 
just to make sure, call it my own doubt, call it insecurity. It was just this season of, man, I really want to know what I'm doing here. Um, and maybe some of it might have even been guilt. Like, as I looked back at my life, I'm like, man, am I ready for this? Uh, am I prepared for the whole Bible college ministry thing? So I take a semester off. Then I go back to Kuiper. And when you go back, like you do, or when you go back, when you go, mm -hmm. when you enroll in school there, um, you do this welcome week thing, right? So new students show up and it's like this week of orientation mm -hmm. and there's students already on campus that lead it. Well, while I was away, Megan ended up at Kuiper in a social work program. And when I came back, she was like the person that was heading up my core group at Welcome Week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and you're like, look, I've already been here and done that. Right, this is yeah, like my second cool. go around. <laughs> like, I know what I'm doing. All right. Who's this so, chick? Who's, who's this, this right chick? here? Yeah. Uh, day one, I look at her and I'm like, all right. <laughs> Yeah. She's pretty nice. Like, this is why pretty I came cute. back. <laughs> yeah. The Lord knew what he was doing, yeah. all right? So, like, week one, I meet Megan, and we're just hanging out, chilling, and just being friends. You know, wink, mm -hmm. wink. I had plans. But, yeah. <laughs> like, like, we're hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Benji, take notes. That's, wink, wink, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, welcome week turns into a coffee date, turns into, uh, like, a movie date, and then it's, hey, I really want to be your boyfriend. And it worked out by God's grace. She said, all wow. right, I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also this thing at Kuiper. So, it's a big circular campus. Mm -hmm. It's just one big loop. That's what we call it, the loop. And if couples or whoever is walking on the loop, and you go through it two times. That the joke there at Reformed Bridal College is you're now yeah. married. Ah, <laughs> so I like it. We did two that laps one in day. The loop <laughs> yeah, and it's, dude. And it's a done deal. We did Game the over. two laps thing, and people oh. were already calling it out. They're like, you know what that means, right? So, but the rest is two history, laps man. In I mean, the loop. we dated, and yeah. then we were engaged, and it was here we go. So, when did you get married? Did you get married before seminary, or so during, or after? It was before. Um, okay. We started dating in 2015 and got married in 2017. And nice. Been together in love and life and family since. So. Yeah. And so it was from there, like you're in college and then in seminary, and the whole time you're also juggling a job at ministry, Ravana, um, Baptist. And throw a wedding in there at one point mm, in time. So yeah. It's like, what is going on yeah, yeah. in my life? And you know, I. I laughed too because so Megan was there for social work um, and she loves the church. I mean, loves it and loves the Lord. But I don't know that she ever saw herself vocationally or naturally just serving in it uh, full time. Hmm. And then she married a pastor. And she I never saw like, a pastor's wife. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, that's that's a that's a calling. Can, yeah. we, can we call it that? It I mean, is. That's that's real. Um, it's so not easy. That's for sure. Her and I looked at each other and we're like. Here we go. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing. You don't know what you got yourself into, but let's do it. Right. Um, so, right. yeah. And you guys now have a son. We do. We have a son named Charlie. Yeah. He is a year and a half old. Yeah, it's such a good age, man. Dude, it's My granddaughter's so much two. fun. I, 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 from 1.5 to like, yeah, yeah. two, it's, it's such a good age. It's so much joy. And like, here's the thing. I don't even want to say this because I don't want to ruin it, but it's all so happy. Mm. It's like the happiest kid I've ever met. Like yeah. he just smiles all the time. He just wants to hang out with you. I'm I'm really looking forward to the future. He's got a full head of hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, and you don't. <laughs> I don't. Dude. We're not gonna make you take it <laughs> off right, right now. That's but it's, it's shiny. Real. Rizzy's it's, so happy to have another I know campus it, man. pastor it's real. who's follically challenged. That's <laughs> all right. Follically challenged. Yeah. So hey, um, since we're just getting so we're gonna be your church family here. So when did it start to go? Oh man. Uh I was probably early on. Oh yeah, I was 17, 18 years old. Really? Wow. Oh yeah, like I remember playing baseball and getting out of practice and like pulling the hat off and seeing it there and I'm like, "Yeah, well, I'm in trouble." <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> this is the way yeah. it's going to go. But you got it all going on here Dude, and all moved. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah it just yeah, moved. It just, <laughs> <from the> <laughs> <laughs> just jumped on down. That's all it is. But I got oh, the dude, I see I these curls guy. all over Charlie's head and I'm like, "You're good, bro." Right, yeah. yeah. At, <laughs> at least for <laughs> now. Look at those at luscious locks now. there. Yeah. Those luscious. Yeah. So sports, hey, so we're we're just playing get to know you here just a little bit. So uh uh you play baseball, baseball, football, basketball, Football, football for a season yeah. uh, for a time anyway yeah. yeah i got to junior year um and i had like my 
third or fourth concussion mm. and a neck injury. And that was like, okay, this is it. Um, we're probably going to have to scale back on sports. So really involved up to that point and picked up a guitar and realized, oh, this is going to be a thing too. So nice. all throughout school, it was like, I love sports. I'm doing them. Still very passionate about them. Um, and when I had to kind of scale back and, and not be as serious, mm-hmm. the Lord said, here you go. Here's, Here's music, a guitar. Mm-hmm. So, did you teach yourself to play? I did. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, at the time, like YouTube wasn't even really a thing. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just sit and listen to a CD and I'm like, I think. I think it goes I like that. That's, that's, that's amazing. Too. I don't have um, that kind of skill. Do you, do you have that kind of skill? No. Yeah. I don't even know if it's skill. It's just guessing really well and having ears. Uh, yeah. That's, so, yeah, I taught myself. Later, I I kind of took seriously the whole music thing and mm-hmm. learned to read it and, and whatnot. But it started with a CD player and guessing. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's what yeah. happened. So. so we need to know because this is the get to know you time. Because like right now, I mean, no pressure, but there's someone out there going, I don't know if I want to go to that Cadillac campus, but... If he says my favorite band, then maybe. Oh, um, yeah. man. So like what kind of band, like <sighs> like what? And remember, remember what kind of church the tab is. Yep. So if you come out with Stephen Curtis Chapman. <laughs> it's not. Trying to be <laughs> Casting spiritual, no, just... we will fire you on the spot. No. <laughs> we will fire <laughs> yeah, you yeah, on the spot. He's gone. No. Yep. Bro. Like, like what kind of music was young Isaac listening to and what kind of music is Isaac listening yeah. to now? So young Isaac was listening to probably like rock and metal. Yeah. Like, I loved it. Metallica and something of that speed. Yeah, Megadeth. Um, yeah, yeah, totally, man. Some Iron <laughs> Maiden in there. <laughs> Come on, yeah, that yeah, was it, yeah. man. <laughs> it was. Uh, it has still a little bit. I, yeah. I mean, I love rock and I love metal, but today it probably changes every day. Yeah. Um, I'm really into this dude right now. Uh, he's kind of a folky alternative guy, Noah Khan. Hmm. Have you heard of him? I'm not mm-hmm. that cool. Okay, no. well, give well, you him a said go. Mumford. I think in your I love interview. Mumford. Yeah. yeah, first time I met you, I asked you this question, dude. Yeah, and it was a test. It was, it was really. A test. <laughs> it was 100 percent a test. There is a right answer. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> no, dude. I mean, not a right answer. There's a right genre. So, so Ben, <laughs> Ben Brown. Said, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, we love ben. that's right. Our executive pastor Ben he, brought you in. He had said that I got hired just because we had a conversation about. I think it was Pantera. It was Pantera. And I'm like, all right, these people yeah. listen to music. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is a good yeah. thing. So. Well, at first, in my office, I'd asked you, oh, you do this, you do that. And it wasn't a formal interview, but it was just like a first shot. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, so what? So, like, who do you listen to? Like, like what's your favorite band? And I was waiting. Is he going to be cast? Is, is, is it, no offense. To, look, casting crowns are Baptist, godly people. Bro. <laughs> like, you know, not, that, that's not the point. But at the tab, it's like, come on, man. Tell us tell, tell me what you're doing in the car. Yep. And you said, man, right now I'm really into Mumford and stuff. I, I was em. like, well done. I like the Mumfords. Mm-hmm. Well done, right? So I'm in concert. But man. it was, it was later that day, Ben Brown came back after you left. And he said that you and – or Seth – you guys were in Manistee. We were, yep. Or Seth and Britain, you're going somewhere. And someone talked about having tickets to Pantera. Yeah. And and they were really super excited. And Ben caught the fact that you said, well, three quarters of Pantera. That's right. or, or, yep. or half a Pantera. I don't even half know. Half a Pantera. Yeah. But the yep. fact that you knew and were up to date yeah. on who was still in the band, Pantera, uh-huh. which is like Dirty Butt Rock. <laughs> it's right. That's so- why I called Dirty Butt Rock, you know? <laughs> he was like, oh, dirty bro's cool, rock. man. If he's a Baptist pastor, because we love we love paradoxes. Oh, yeah. So here's a Baptist pastor wearing a flowered shirt, <laughs> tatted up in Michigan, but he, mm-hmm. but he knows that it's only half a Pantera. We might be on the right track. I here. love yeah. to see it. Yeah. So the, the moral of the story is seminary is cool, but just know your metal. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Sem- I'm going to write that down. That might be the tagline. Oh. Seminary. Now, uh, I don't want to hurt um, Adam's feeling, but what is your feeling about country music? Oh, I feel like you're waiting for a really specific answer. Well, okay, let's go. Adam, what's your feeling on country music? I love country music. Do you? But real okay. country music. Not, no, hold you. on. Not the country music that's on the radio today, because that's not country music. That's like this weird pop. Johnny something. Cash? Yeah. Oh, Johnny Cash. Yeah. That was my first album. <laughs> so I lo- Johnny Cash is his own genre, but we interrupted. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. No, that's what I was saying. Like, real con- like King George. 
Oh, some George yeah. Strait. Like, George, yeah. Real Waylon Jennings music. up like, in there. Like, but what's this crap you're always playing at? You're in the lobby when you're alone. It's like, why is it, what's he listening to? What do you mean? It's not George Strait or Cash, because I'd be with you. Craig Morgan. Okay. Um, oh, that's real country. Yeah, yeah that's good. He, he doesn't. Dude, he's, he's old. He's I wasn't in the Air Force, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's old. No, I so I so myself. so you're not Chris operate. Stapleton. Oh, so now Stapleton. Oh, He's yeah, his own dude. genre. I love yeah. that guy. Yeah, I play a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I love what about it. like? Okay. Yeah. See, I like need to it's breathe. It's so I love. cheesy I know, sometimes, yeah, but country, like Toby but... Keith. Yeah, I love Toby. Mm, yeah. Mm, I can't Toby help Keith. it. Man. Some of his songs. So, some of it's he's. Yeah, he's done the radio thing here yeah, and there too. But you know, he's been, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so those are musical things. Oh yeah, we're playing "Get to Know You." Um, you love. You said this. Well, okay, we got to dial it back. For those of you that yeah, weren't at the annual meeting, yep. if you're at the annual meeting, that was our first formal introduction <laughs> of um, Isaac Riddle. And is there also, a video somewhere? Somewhere there's okay, a video. Okay. It was recorded. We, we, Isaac came in hot. Uh, no, according <laughs> to him, he kept it calm. I thought it was chill. All right. <laughs> the rest of us were like, he came in hot. It was like, hey, here's our campus pass for Cadillac. We had Ron Lamer in there too. He's going to do do some admin, a lot of the admin operation stuff, yep. whatever. He's our campus director. But we said, Isaac Riddle, you came in hot on that <laughs> mic. <laughs> Literally, I, I won't do it in the mic right right oh, now. Man. I jumped and I was behind you. Oh, I was like, "Yeah." Did you yeah. see me look at you for like yes. a face of approval? Too? Yes. I saw him look down a little bit, and, and I kept like, like, "Don't talk to me. Talk to them. I Turn know. around. What are you looking at me for?" But it was like, "Judd, I'm doing this to you right now." <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to scale back. Okay. The the dead giveaway though is like I was thirty seconds in, mm. and it got hot, and I felt oh. this like. Yeah, sweat a little already. bead of sweat yeah. start to drip down. Was and it I'm like? Was it nerves? Just a little bit? I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah. I think I was just too pumped. Um, <laughs> like that, <laughs> there's, that there's was, a lot of lights up there. Dude, though. They get hot. I, I was felt too it pumped. come down, and I'm oh, like, I'm okay, <laughs> maybe I'm not as chill as yeah. I was trying to be. <laughs> but I think you know, I'm too pumped here. I'm just, hey, John, I'm gonna I'm gonna step outside. I'm, I'm really excited right now. Take over. That'd have been awesome. Ron was calm. Oh, Ron. Oh yeah. It's because Isaac had all the energy. It's true. Yeah. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna make for a great team. That's all right. Yeah, no, he's, he's was, the steady, and I'm just gonna shout at you. Okay. So. so at the annual meeting, you said golf, fishing, hunting. Yep. Is that oh, yeah. is there an order to that, or is it just you just yeah. threw it all okay, out there? I guess it, it probably depends on the season. Right now, my favorite thing is golf. Yeah, because uh, it's summertime. We're playing it. When did you pick up golf? Like high school or something? You know, no, I, probably college. Yeah. Um, in high school, it was like. It was one of those things that just weren't fun. I don't yeah. know why, but why I had parents that watched golf. Oh, I watching you, golf. So I, I love <laughs> golf. I hate watching golf. Oh, so yeah. Like, Here's the thing, though. Now I love watching it. But as a kid, it was like, this is the worst thing yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. You know, graduated high school and got this really cheap set and started yeah. playing. And I'm like, well, this is the most addictive thing in the whole world. Yeah, it is. Uh, so that's, it is. That's also the most people that don't play don't oh, yeah. understand how addictive it can be. Dude. It's, in a good way. I mean, it's, oh, a yeah. it's a healthier addiction than others. But you hit it's, one shot and it's terrible. And you're like, this game is stupid. It's, it's, it's I paid a form, to do this. But then your next shot, you're like, I could probably be on the tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it gives you just enough... To keep coming back, and yeah. it, it's like a form of spiritual accountability too. Because the amount <laughs> yeah. of times that I'm like, I want to break this club and say some things right now, and mm -hmm. then I can't. Yeah. Uh, so I like it because it it keeps me uh, yeah keeps me just checked. I think it's also but, social. Yeah, I'm just like I golfed a lot. It was hard to golf a ton when our children were little. Yep. Because. For me to golf, I've got to be in a great state of mind. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the children's fault. Is I felt guilty for how long golf took. Mm -hmm. And my wife's in a 5v1 zone defense. And I'm out yep. here with my buddies. And so there was about a 10 years where golf went away. But now that they're kind of self contained oh, like yeah. me and my bro Jonesy, like we got the membership. I mean, we're getting back into it. Yep. And it's like, oh dang. And it's I love fun, the manicured, dude. like my my yard in heaven will be like mm. a fairway. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to agree with that one. Oh, dude, I it's, love it's fresh fun. cut grass. It is. Yeah. I, I think so. Right now, yeah, it's golf. It's, it's first on the list. Uh, you know, when summer ends, it's probably hunting. Uh, yeah, I have, dude, such a deep love for the woods. Just the woods. What What do you love about it? Because you're a social person. I so am, do you love the isolation, or do you just thing, love the like, hunt itself? I love people. 
and I, I love spending time with them and just doing relationship journeying, yeah. as we yeah. say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then you get out there and it's like, okay, this is for me and the Lord. Yeah. Like it's nice. just a little bit of a recharge. Um, and if in the meantime we Same put some food me. on the table, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but every time I walk out there and I look around, I'm like, dude, God did this. Yeah. You see the color of these leaves right now? You see yeah. the way that these hills are formed and moving or whatever? So that's what it is for me. Are you is... bow or gun or both? Both. Both. Yeah. yeah. Which Which do you like more? I think. Because that says something about it. Dude. I know. Okay, dude, somebody's going to pick on me for this, but I, I think probably gun. Yeah, me too. I like a lot more just because, you know. I didn't grow up shoot, shooting a bow. But no. I, I've shot a deer with a bow. Have you? But crossbow. Okay, I was just, <laughs> I own one. I own yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, listen, I love yeah, them. And you know, people count. knock them, yeah, but see, I'm like. Right over here. See dude, this guy? If I went Typical hunting, hunting snob. Yeah. <laughs> How many deer, deer have you died? got with your bow? <laughs> Two. Two. Okay. Well, that's impressive. Yeah. Wow. I'm not as were, much of an avid hunter. I mean, you, I like it, but. Were you using a tool when you shot that deer? What do you mean? When you shot the deer with your compound bow. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a tool? Yeah. Is that a tool to kill a yeah, deer the with? Right yeah. Tool. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the why? The right tool, he <laughs> says. So, so why wasn't it a recurve? I'm not that much of a man. Uh, well, they, <laughs> dude, who is it? Seth? Who is somebody? I just talked to somebody at the Oh, there's a whole so bunch. Martin. They're recurve. Oh, oh yeah. Martin, it doesn't count either. <laughs> Does it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't count because he's never done it. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's because right. he's yeah. he's trying to. T so. This is my whole point with hunting. If you're using a tool, you're cheating. Yep. Unless you chase yeah. the deer down Put and kill it with your bare hands. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's like real. Whether it's a knife or, or, well, it's a rock, a knife, a recurve, a compound, a crossbow, a gun. Yeah. It's, it's all it's tools, tool. man. Yeah. You know? It's and real. My shoulder doesn't do the thing. In, and do in what you enjoy. Yeah. And do what you yeah. enjoy. Here's the yeah. thing. If it, if it gets you out there, mm -hmm. yeah. that's a win. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, What's it's high on What's the biggest deer you ever shot? Uh, honestly, um, or is, is that yet to be like, is that monster buck? You're it's still probably waiting? yet to be okay. like I shot, I want to say a, a fair sized seven okay. point nice. is probably up there on the list, but I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I'm not much of a trophy hunter. You're not either. a trophy. You're just after the meat. Like cool. if, if there's a big old doe that walks out, mm -hmm. it's probably going in the freezer. That's so, the one. Yeah. Good that's, for you. That's what it is. And so um, fishing, like what season are you fishing? Spring? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. And I like it a lot. It's What I like about fishing is it's a lot more social. Mm. So you can go out there with somebody and have conversation and also mm -hmm. be on the water. I'm a water fanatic. I love it. If we're just fishing or in a boat or whatever, that's another one of those things that I look at and I'm like, dude, God did this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so cool to me. Um, but... It's also the one that I think, I, I'm not going to do fishing justice here, but it's the one that I get bored of the quickest. Oh, okay. Uh, like, at some point, I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over this. So, I'm going to give you two names. Okay. You need to put them in the computer banks. Got it. Matt Stevens, mm -hmm. chairman of the board, knows every inch of the Manistee River. Sweet. You'll catch steelhead. Okay. He's amazing. Or nice. salmon. He's the, he's the thing. If you're in Manistee, you need to get to know Matt McQueen. The dude, I, I don't do a lot of social media, but yep. whenever there's any sort of McQueen social media activity that someone shows me, it involves Matt with his big giant red Viking beard yeah. and a, just a slew of fish. Yeah. And his gaggle of children also slaying all just the fish. Yeah. Going at it. I love I, it. They homeschool kids and slay fish. Perfect. Everywhere, That's, yeah, those are important and things. Of yeah. course, they love Jesus too. But um, Matt McQueen, Matt Stevens. So okay, um, Matt. So about God's word. So like, like, what's your favorite parts? As you know, you've studied it for class at yeah. Kuiper. You yep. studied it for seminary. You've studied it to preach. Like, what parts of God's word attracts you the most? Yep. As we're just playing, um, get to know you. You know, I think I think this is another answer that probably changes every day. But right now, I think probably like the book of Romans hmm. as a whole. One, because, dude, I love Paul. Um, 
he's he's just got a way about him with his theology that I'm mm-hmm. like, all right. Uh, but you look at Romans as a whole, and it, there's like 11 chapters of just some of the headiest stuff mm-hmm. you could ever read. And sometimes it's kind of hard to follow along. But it's just a ton of God's dealings with human beings. Mm. And it's awesome, and it's full of grace, and it, you just see God in full. And then you get to Romans 12. And Paul gets real, right? Yeah. Everything I just told you, everything you just read in these last 11 chapters, here's your response. You're going to give your life to him. Living you're gonna, sacrifice. You're going to offer yeah. yourself as a living sacrifice. And I think every day right now, I'm trying to figure out what that means. Like living sacrifice. Mm. That's a big deal. And I don't even know if I'm doing it fully yet, um, but I know that it means complete, total surrender. So mm. just, dude, that whole narrative. This is who God is, and because of that, this is who you need to be. Yeah. So get after it. Right. Uh, there's just there's kind of a kick in the pants there from mm-hmm. him that I just I think is really nice. necessary. So that's, yeah. that's right now. What is the hardest part about the Bible for you? Either oh, to understand man. or like, oh, I just avoid that like the plague, or, or, mm-hmm. or is there anything? You know, I feel like this is a really like cliche, churchy answer, but probably Revelation I have mixed feelings. Yeah. Um, one, because you read it and you celebrate. Yeah. This is happening. All right. And I'm really looking forward to the day that all this is true. Jesus mm-hmm. comes back and we're with him. Yeah. But at the same time, you're reading through just a ton of imagery that's like, uh, really hard. My yeah. head yeah. hurts right now. Yeah. Why is this not more clear? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean it isn't valuable. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just. It's a lot. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think that's cliche at all. Mm-mm. I th- I think that's, that's actually that's real? refreshingly okay. honest. Because there's a lot of people. It's like, man, my favorite book's Book of Revelations. Yeah, <laughs> Re- shuns. shuns. Well, first of all, there's no S. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And and but to say because I I share your that feel like I love it, mm-hmm. but it's also um. It is, as Paul said, and this I'm quoting the King James, it's like looking through the glass darkly. Yep. You know, it isn't, there's a veil there on purpose. Mm -hmm. And there's some really smart guys that write really dense books about this. Oh, yeah. But the problem is, is none of those smart guys that know all the original, none of them agree. I know. Well, <laughs> so find the guy real. that's the, yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's oh, you got to read this guy's commentary on Revelation because he gets your life. This guy, but, but they're both really smart guys. And they disagree. And it's mm. th- that's probably the other reason why Revelation sits a little lower on the list right mm. now. Um, yeah. Because not only is it complex, it's good, it's valuable, it is the story yeah. of Jesus. Um, but it also just creates a ton of division yes. in the church. Mm-hmm. And we're yes. really good at that, uh, picking fights yeah. about things. But that's like the one book that my grandma and I text back and forth. And we're like, yeah. this is why you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> right, right, it's right. Like, why right. are we doing this right now? But I this love that matter. your grandma's asking <laughs> you about theology and <laughs> revelation. That's I'll really show cool. you my phone. <laughs> yeah. there, there is a thread where I it's like, love it. this is today's theology question. And I'm like, I yeah. I'll probably fail it, but I'll give it a go. That's um, awesome. That's where we're at. So That's awesome. Uh, what is your favorite thing about ministry? Like, my... to, to, to like be a part of, like, because you've been doing it for a while. Because yep. you're. You're 29, 28? 28. You're you know? 28 years old, but you've been doing ministry in a church nine, 10 years? Yeah, 18 yeah. years old. Yeah, wow. Um, 2013. Is so in all the ministry experiences, you've done the music, you've done teaching, you've done discipleship, you've been in front of, you just, yep. your last thing at Ravana, which we're super grateful that this church had this great kingdom perspective mm-hmm. and sending you out to us and all oh, that, Yeah. but was leading an overseas missions trip. But yeah. what has like been your favorite part of ministry? You know, I don't know if I can if I can call it one thing, um, but just seeing the progression and the ongoing change in a transformed life. Mm. Like I've seen people meet Jesus and understand him for the first time. And then to see their life three or four years later, Mm. after they figured out what it means to walk with him, Mm. that's really cool. Um, So just that discipleship journey getting to walk alongside people as we figure out what it means to make sense of faith. Mm. That to me is my favorite part. Mm. Um, just watching people fall in love with Jesus. And that takes different shapes throughout their walk, throughout their, their, uh, faith journey. So. Yeah. You got a question over there. 
because I'm because I you know I just got a list and you do know you me I just keep I do them. but it, it's I might be skipping ahead a little bit but how how did you know when it like this whole tab thing yeah. oh like yeah after you come to interview yeah. and, and you that meet was a my bunch next of, question yeah. yes. nice. yeah. so, you meet a bunch of crazies and and you and your wife are talking about like how did you how do you know like yeah this is the this is the next step for yeah, us yeah like why okay us? so here's the thing I I don't know if the feeling was mutual this could be embarrassing um but we got connected and we were having conversation right and I should point out I was perfectly happy. And just loving mm-hmm. the season of ministry before the tab. Nope, you said that. Um, you said that in your interview. Did I? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that was a reality for me. But at the same time, there had been a couple years where I, I was just sitting here feeling this stirring and maybe this pushing from the Spirit. And after Megan and I talked, we found out for a few months we had some unity in that. Didn't even know it. So the tab and I, we, we get together and we're having conversations. And I think it was like a, a visit candidating weekend do we use mm-hmm. that word anymore i don't, I don't know uh, it was an isaac visit it was, it was yeah. uh was i visited out. the tab came in hot <laughs> that's yeah. right came in <laughs> he hopefully did. not as hot as hey, the guys. annual meeting <laughs> that's, that's came the office we're all like yelled, northwest like, michigan <laughs> sad yeah it's like, been great what are you, Why are you yelling at me it's january <laughs> it's a <He's> blizzard <laughs> what are you festive about oh, oh, no, no sorry sorry yeah so yeah it's that weekend, right, where we're just doing a ton of get-to-know-you time. And I think that was the one, like, we were up here. Megan was up here, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was the formal interview weekend. Yep. yep. So we had some conversation, and then I think it was a Saturday service where we just attended here in Buckley. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went to church and worshipped with you guys, and we had some conversations in the lobby, and we're just talking with people. Um and we got in the car. We both looked at each other. Like we hadn't had super official conversations mm-hmm. yet up to this point. I mean, really getting down to it. But after that worship service, Megan and I looked at each other and we both said, "What is happening in that church? What's going on?" Because you can just see it. Um, and I say that to affirm mm-hmm. the tab, mm-hmm. um, but also to acknowledge that. God's doing some really cool things. We, we literally said, what is happening in this place? It is just vibrant. It's real. You see life change. And we both just kind of nodded like, yeah. It's a fit. If the Lord is in this yeah. and you guys make a phone call, we're going to do it. Yeah. Um, it was just, and you know, that you've been through changes and seasons in life. Mm-hmm. There's still tension with that. And mm-hmm. there's still hurt of having to close one chapter and move to another. Yeah. It's real, and I yeah. felt that. Um, even in the midst of that, though, it was like, this is mm. really cool. Yeah. And the Lord's given some awesome peace. So I, I probably just give you five answers. but No, that's um, great. That, that car ride right after that Saturday service was like, yeah, this is it. Because didn't you have to drive all the way home? I think because I did. Because you had Ravana Baptist Church duties that, I that think next day. I did, yeah, yeah. the very next yeah. day. Um, because it was a couple... I, I can't, it was, it was a while later. Like, uh, we, we were, um, well, we try to do this with all of our hires mm-hmm. is we try to make our hellos long, we try to make our goodbyes short. Yep. Um, uh, and, and that's just kind of like a cliche, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. And most of our hires are from within. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we'd made this long. Yeah. And so there was a time like we prayed about it. We we took a long time getting to know you. We called references. We called in or like we knew we liked you mm-hmm. um, a lot. And uh, um, so just without g- giving up the whole process, I remember when you and I met, you know, I said, hey, man, let's meet in Grand Rapids. Oh, yep. Um, I'm going to be bringing you an offer. And you, dude, it, it was so, what was the name of that restaurant that we met at? Uh, the Beltline Bar. It was yeah. the Belt. No, no, no. It was a Mexican place. Yeah, but but it's called the Beltline Bar. It it's is, like a yep. it's like a Tex Mex place. Yep, that's what it was. Not Mexican. Mm-hmm. It's, okay, so you said, hey, the Beltline Bar's got some great food. I'd never been there. I would never even stop in this place because I think I, I'm in Grand Rapids. I'm gonna get shot. <laughs> some of the best food I've ever had. Oh, I don't know good. what it was, Dude, but we would just. But you told me that story. Uh-huh. Um, that that when you got in the car that your wife was like, yeah, 
Mm-hmm. And and I think you said something like Megan doesn't get fired up about things. She like she's not easily excitable about she's stuff. The she's the careful one. She's the careful one. Yep. Mm-hmm. She's strategic. And, yeah. Uh, and and planning and thinking and yeah. To see that look of. But you said yeah. you guys were just united. She oh, was like, yeah. oh, I could be a part of these people. It was it was real and it was quick. Not to say that we acted on anything prematurely, right. but just right. encouraging to early on in that process to see. In my wife, yeah. Oh, this is good. Mm, yeah. I'm like, well, that's really good because I feel yeah. the same way, and yeah. I really don't want us to disagree on this. <laughs> right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. No, that's but, awesome. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it was real. And the cool thing is, is through j- just for our tab family, like like you made your exit at Ravana very gracious. Mm-hmm. They were very gracious. So gracious. Um, you like we were even talking about moving, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey man, do you need some help with moving? And I remember coming back to our leadership team and said, yeah, we were like, hey, can we help you? Because you had to pack up all your stuff because you were living in a parsonage down there. That's right. And then you bought a house in Cadillac and, and your guys were moving there. And I'm like, hey, can the tab come and help you? And his response, I told the leadership team this, they go, you know, Isaac told me that the men of Ravana were going to help him pack his stuff and crew. help him move yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, this is what Buckley, this is how Buckley thinks. This is how Tabernacle thinks, not just mm-hmm. Buckley. This is Manistee too. Do you know what their response was? Well, that could be a really, really good thing or a really, really yeah. bad thing. <laughs> Maybe they like, get him out of here. Get this guy <laughs> out of here. Yeah. Dude, we'll help you pack oh, your bag. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I hope that wasn't yeah, what it no, was. But, no, no. <laughs> but just, they're, you know, just super gracious in that exit and you finished well there. You've had your last Sunday. Yeah. And then, Right now, as you speak, or as we speak, you're in the process of getting up to speed, mm-hmm. hanging out with other campus pastors, you're making plans. Yeah. What are your first impressions of like Cadillac? This is your, you know, you're going to love Cadillac. You're, you're, yeah. This is your new field. This is your ministry field. This is your 15 acres. Yep. It's more than that. It's mm-hmm. what, whatever. What are your first impressions of like what ministry is going to be like there? You know, my, my first impression, and this is not a cliche cop out. It's just, let's go. This is really exciting. For one, we love Cadillac. Hmm. We've been here for three weeks, but from what we can see, <laughs> we love it. Um, yeah. Just in like going out to restaurants and having conversations with people hmm. uh, and just literally randomly getting to know people. I'm like, I-, I love this community. I love the potential for ministry opportunity and hmm. I love the tab. So to see that hmm. come into the Cadillac is just, let's go. The exciting thing right now is we have a plan. Mm-hmm. We have an idea, we have a game plan, but I think there's still a lot of moving pieces Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we don't have the answer to yet. Like we're sitting here going, how do we do this? What's the best move here? What seems good in this situation? Uh, And I look at all of that and go, this is really exciting Hmm. because we don't know how all of this is going to map out yet, but we see God moving in it and saying, hey, go to Cadillac. Hmm. So I'm just looking forward to seeing that unfold. Don't know what that means yet. Right. Um, but just living in the unknown right now yeah. is super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it is. It's weird to say. But. Yeah, we were just down there for that uh, our, our, that meeting mm-hmm. in the building, which is on 13th Street in yeah. Cadillac. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's the only church on 13th Street. So uh, mm-hmm. between Highway 115 and what I call the main drag. That's if you're right. just driving that road, you'll drag. see it. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we haven't put a sign on it or anything, but just that was exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we have some get her done guys in Lakeshore Construction, and they're just looking at how we're going to renovate that building. And there was energy in the room. It I was mean, real. I mean, Mm -hmm. decisions are being made. You know, guys are, you know, I had a stupid idea and they're like, structurally, John, no, we can't (laughs) push it and slide in here. (laughs) So, but you know, there's guys that know with the specs on the girders that were in there, you know, but, uh, you know, something about a loop and drop off and kids men and how big is this lobby going to be and blowing out this wall and closing those stairs and, and putting in this false wall and it's stage. And it was like, it was, but that's just a building. Yep. What I hear from you is you're excited about the people. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because a church, a campus is her people. Mm-hmm. It's not the building. It's yeah. so true. And I'm thankful for that meeting yesterday 
um, I don't know if I brought anything valuable to the table. Well, me, like you and me were just like, oh, <laughs> these guys know I'm stuff like, about stuff. These guys are making really cool plans. Yeah. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I could I have been at the ops meeting because <laughs> we're talking about, you know, discipleship groups. Yeah. And I still made it. Too, oh, so that was did. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He, he was there. Right. Hey, you guys, yeah. hey, you guys got this? These hammers? Okay. Uh, cool. You guys got I gotta these go plans? To Manistee. I'm um, going to go talk about people. Love you. Yeah, you made it. Um, so it's good. So exciting to think about the building, but yeah, for me right now, it's what are we doing with the people who are walking in? I mean, what does it really mean to be the church with this community right now? Uh, that's an exciting thought. There's a ton of possibility, and for what it's worth, like any town anywhere, there's a ton of mission opportunity. So right. we're just we're looking forward to seeing kingdom work happen, whatever that means. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's good. well. We know we have. We have a fight club there yep. and we have more men that are from east of the Buckley campus mm -hmm. that could be in a fight club that aren't yet. Yeah. Um, so we're excited about that. We have a tab women's group that's meeting. Yeah. Uh, you've planned uh, an interest meeting for later this summer. You that's and Ron right. yep. together. And we're going to get all the interested parties and whatever that thing is going to look like, go yeah. for it. What I'm interested in, and it, it, we've never really had to do this before. Um to a certain extent, we did in Manistee, but students, um, there's a lot of students mm -hmm. that um, we know are not connected. So we have something for men, we have something for women, but they're students. And one of the interesting things that Ron said, because he and his wife, Carrie, um, have, they've attended this church, I think, a decade. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the way back to when we were just one building here, we didn't have two campuses, we, we hadn't even built T2 yet. And... One of the things that Ron shared in his interview was they'd chosen this as their church, but it also meant that their teenage kids could really not be involved with Foundry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just wasn't going to work with school and sports because that's that's a 35, 45 minute yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for a them hike. a drive. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm thinking, wow, student ministry is the tail that wags the dog of any church. Yep. And so real quick, we're going to need something. Yeah. There. And I, I'm I'm not asking you to answer that right now, but it's like, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. You know? There's a lot of conversation yeah. <laughs> pertaining to that no conversation. Doubt. Right there. No doubt. Uh, no doubt. Because they have a massive high school. It's a big town. They do. It's bigger than Buckley and Manistee both. Yeah. So here we're planting a campus in something that's more than well, Manistee's more than ten times the size of Buckley. Yeah. And I believe Cadillac's twice the size of Manistee. I think so. Probably, yeah. So yeah. probably yeah. So Somewhere you got a plan in, for that? Mr. We've been Instagram. talking. Yeah, we've we'll been, make it. We've been throwing some ideas around. I'm, and I'm, I, that was one thing I was going to say is I'm really excited. Uh, just conversations that I've had with you being a youth guy, obviously, is mm -hmm. um, that was one of the first conversations you were having is is about youth. How do we get youth there? Yeah. How do we yep. get them involved? Yeah. Um, that's a, it's so, a necessary ministry yeah, there. I think mm -hmm. that's awesome, man. I'm pumped. Yeah. That's cool. Bro, it's going to be good. It's it's going to be I, good. I just wish you were more excited about things. <sighs> yeah, seriously. Trying, can you bring man. some energy, though? If, especially if you're going to do youth. Or something. I mean, yeah. Yeah, bring some energy. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're saying if I bring that same tone from annual meeting to a youth group conversation. You have to bring it up. Uh, right. yeah. Okay, bring, it, bring up it up a little, up a little bit. bit. Just, just do it, <laughs> dude. Bring it up that. Just Coming. turn it up. This is Isaac. <laughs> this is Isaac Riddle. Coming in hot. I love it. Yeah, did we miss anything? I don't know. Are there any outstanding, like, you know, this is like, we got you under the hot lamps. This is a terrible question. Where were you tonight? Yeah. Where were you tonight? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh, do, just the randoms. Yep. Uh, steak or fish? Steak. Uh, beach or mountains? Mountains. Ooh. Yeah. Pie or cake? Pie. Praise God. He's Christian. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah. He's Christian. You did it right the other He's day. Right. About, uh, um, Michigan or state? State all uh, day. Oh, he's a MSU. Unapologetically, too. Wow. Yeah. He's from farm him country. What did, what did you expect? What did you expect? Hey, man. look. It's fun. The People's Republic of Michigan mm -hmm. is, listen, no offense to the Go Blues. I get mm -hmm. it. I'm, you know, mad respect, but it's a fascist university, or at least a communist one. Yeah. At least Marx. I mean, they are Marxists, let's be honest. Michigan State better? Well, at least they're farmers. I mean, like, they know where their food comes from. They're just confused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> confused about what? <laughs> about they're the, they're green. the same as Michigan. They're just farmers as well. Oh, uh, man. So I'm speaking at Lake Ann Camp this week yeah. for a uh, for an uh, awesome church, uh, Redeemer 
um, mm-hmm. Bible church from Indiana mm-hmm. and just playing get to know you. I'm like, we have any Indiana fans here and the Purdue. Yeah. You know, and then there was a Buckeye. There, there were Michigan and Michigan State fans within these Indiana people. And then, you know, and then there was a Buckeye fan. I'm like, what? what you know, my dad's here? a Buckeye. Yeah, I can't rip yeah. that. Why? But then I'm like, hey, look, guys, you know, I'm I. I cheer for Notre Dame. I got booed. <laughs> I got booed, he I, says. These Indiana people are the nicest people on the planet. They're like the Canadians of the Midwest, oh, you know, weird. and Dude. and it's just super polite. And I got booed for Notre Dame. I'm like, be careful, man. Notre Dame's name for Jesus' mom. That's right. You know, and they're like, oh, we didn't know that. We don't speak French, but whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, Isaac, thank you so much yeah, bro. Um, this is good. for breaking this down. Benji, you got any questions for Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> Benji, I wish you'd bring a little energy. Why don't you come in hot for once? We can teach him. No, we can, we can, we can do, I got you, bro. We can make it. The same way Pastor Mark mentored Isaac, I, Pastor I, Isaac's going to bring up Benji I love it. in the ways of energy. In the yeah. ways of. But, oh. Tab, family, um, and Herschel. Yep. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for persevering with us. If. You are uh, from the East. It's not like we're trying to get rid of you. It's yeah. we just want to share what God's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we've we've as a leadership felt for a while that the Cadillac area is the place where God wants us to go next. We could fall flat on our face, but I think God won't. I think whatever we try, yeah. if it's for the right purpose and it, it then and it's to glorify the name of Jesus, then it's within His will. And so, um, if you're from Cadillac, you're from Manton, Houghton Lake, Lake City, Tustin. Wherever you are coming f- from that, you might even be halfway between Cadillac and Misik and decide, I'm going to go to the Cadillac campus because mm-hmm. I can go to church there on a weekend and then I can, you know, actually have a restaurant besides the very few options in Buck <laughs> <laughs> Right. right. Um, we hope you'll come to the uh, um, the information, well, the, what is it? The interest meeting? Interest meeting, yeah. 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 What is that date again? Do you July remember? 16 at 6 p.m. July 16, so, yeah. 6 p.m. at T13, at right? T13. In Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. we'll be Cadillac. there at the yeah. campus. Yeah. So we hope you'll go to that. Um, if you see Isaac and Megan Megan on a weekend and Charlie, please make them feel welcome. Yeah. And, uh, um, and if you see Ron, Ron, Ron's been here for a while. Just give Ron a good game. And then mm-hmm. we'll just see if we can get Ron on this podcast. But, yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Adam, you got anything else? No, man. Thanks. Thanks for Thanks, being guys. here. Yeah, I'm pumped. This is fun. I'm excited. Sweet. Mm. And so, Tab family, until next time, this is Isaac, Adam, Benjamin, and yours truly signing off. <laughs> <laughs>